Anyone having any issue into that constructor part? Hello. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. So we are starting from the constructor parameters. Constructor can also take parameters which is used to initialize attribute. Like the normal method, we initialize, we can uh, give the parameters and later we are giving the arguments for the parameters like that for the constructor because because like the normal method constructor is also a method but it is a special method because the constructor name matched with the class name and that constructor we don't need to create the constructor separately but whenever we are creating any class in that time i am uh, we are creating the constructor as well we are creating the constructor as well so constructor is a method like the normal method look at this look at this method constructor method normal method we can pass the parameter where we can pass the parameter after declaring the method name after method name that that round basis we are declaring now in under the in between that round basis we can pass the parameters like the same in the time of the constructor also we can pass the parameters and the argument as well and let's see how we can pass the arguments or the param and the par parameters in a constructor look at this example public class main a class main class name is main i have declared i have started the body in between the in between the body of class we have declared an att class attribute that is integer x the value of that x i haven't given now we are declaring the constructor because look at this public main that matched with the class name and then the round basis we have given and in between the round basis i am giving the parameters only the parameters i am giving arguments we are not giving only the parameter i am declaring integer y the parameter type is integer and the name of the parameter is y now like the normal method constructor also have its own body so using the curly braces i am declaring the body for the constructor under the body what i am doing look at this that in the class attribute that class attribute i have declared that the variable integer x that x the value of that particular x variable i haven't given any so where i am giving under the constructor after declaring the constructor we are declaring the variable value of x and how we are declaring x equals to that integer x equals to the value that the parameter we have passed into the constructor that parameter value i am passing into the x that means the what is the value of x the value of x will be the value of y the parameter of the constructor whatever the value i will give in later that value will be to we, uh, we are storing into the or we are assigning it the parameter arguments that value we are assigning to the variable x that x is in where that x is in the integer x that is in the class at that is in the class block that means this is an instance variable and now x equals to y the parameters uh, that uh, constructor parameter is the value of the x now we need to give the one part is completed the variable the value that declared as integer type the value for that particular integer x variable we have declared the value and that value is the value of y now the pending part is the constructor parameter argument that means the const the parameter we have passed into the constructor that value i need to declare and how to do that we need to oh, you want to do that after doing that we are declaring the main method public static void main string args now under the main method we are creating the object for the class because if i wanted to use if i wanted to use the or you want to call the particular integer x just because this is in the class block that means this is an instance variable without an object we cannot call that particular variable so object creation is mandatory and the second thing why that into that particular program another one thing is very important but for object creation is very important because look at this constructor that constructor that i have declared for that constructor did that having uh, it, that particular constructor having a parameter and we all know that that constructor is a method we all know a method a normal method after declaring the method until and unless we are not calling that particular method we will not get any output from the method like the constructor also and uh, it is a method it's a special method but it is a method until and unless we are not calling that particular method we will not get any output 
so and the main actual difference is what the main difference is that normal method we need to call it separately by its name but the constructor where we are calling that constructor in the time of the object creation in the time of because the constructor we don't need to call it separately we will call that particular constructor in the time of the object creation it, and where we are calling the object in the time of the object creation means look at this object creation syntax mean that class name my obj that object name any that any object name i, have give, I can give that here i have given my obj equals to new keyword in the time of the object creation that means if i, I have declared the constructor and if i am not creating the object if I am not creating the object for the class, that means we can without creating the object, we cannot call the constructor because a constructor is calling you when we are calling the constructor. We don't need to call the constructor only at the time of the object creation that constructor is calling is going to be doing automatically. So when their constructor, I have made that constructor here in, in there here that constructor I have given a parameter and that Make it, I have made the constructor visible. So I, if I want to keep the arguments for the constructor parameter, I need to create the object of the class. Otherwise, I will not be able to give the arguments for the parameter, that parameter we have passed into the constructor. So in the time of the object creation, the constructor parameter arguments I'm passing here in the time when we are calling the object creation. We are calling the constructor in the time of the object creation. Now, System router printl in my obj that is the class name and integer x that variable is at in is in the class body that x I am calling using the object of the main class. Now look at this. What is the value of x? The value of x is the that parameter of the constructor y. And what is the value of y? That value of y is equals to 5. So that 5 is going into that x. That means whenever I'm calling that particular x variable using the object, because it is an instance variable, it is, this is in the class at the, in the class block. So with the object name, we are calling that particular instance, instance variable. Whenever I'm calling that instance variable, we will get that particular value of x equals to y. That means the y is 5. Is that program clear to you all or still anyone having any issue? Please let me know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Everyone clear now. <clears throat> okay, so uh, execute that program. Answer. Everyone done? Let everyone to complete, then I will go to the next topic. Yes, sir. So, should I go to the next topic? Now, that was the, the previous one, was, was the single parameters you can have as many uh, as many parameter as you want like what public class main int model year integer model year the variable or the class attribute i am declaring integer model year string model name now public main integer in that particular constructor method i am passing two parameters in the previous example was only one parameter and here multiple parameter that means the pa multiple parameters you can pass and just need to separate it with the comma now the same thing model yar and equals to yar that means look at this model yar variable is that data type is integer 
and that ER parameter, that data type of that ER, ER parameter is also integer. So I can easily assign the model ER parameter value to that model ER. So I'm assigning the ER parameter value to the model ER and the model name parameter, that name parameter value, that string parameter, that string name, that parameter, string data type, I have passed into the constructor, that name value of that name parameter, I am passing to the model name. Now public static void means string args, main my car equals to new main. I'm creating the object for the main class because the same example, only the difference is the, in the previous example, there are only one parameter. In that particular example, there are two parameters. So that first 1969 is going to the integer ER and that under that second one is a string type. So I put it in the double quotes and that mustang is going to the name. Now system out of print ln, my car using the object name, we are calling the model ER because on into the model ER, I am assigned the value of that ER. And into the model name, I am assigned the value of name. That means whenever I will call that model ER, it will give an output, whatever the value is in the parameter ER. And if I am calling a model name, that means it will give you an output, whatever the value I have stored into the string name parameter. So system out of print ln, my car dot model ER, we are concatenating then some special Hello, sir, yes, very easy and is it clear now hello yeah. yes, sir. okay so system out of printer and my car dot model here we are calling and then using the plus that is the concatenation sign we are concatenating with a space look at this within the double quotes actually this is a string but we all know that within the double quotes whatever i will write or nine we are writing the way we are writing it will be printed in your screen as it is here i am giving a space in between the two double in between the double quotes that means it that space will be printed in your screen and then again concatenating my car dot model name so what will be the output can anyone just tell me nineteen sixty nine mustang is out yeah that will be the out is that program clear? So I'm going to the next topic. So now the Java modifiers. Modifiers. By now, you are quite familiar with the public keyword that appears in most all of our example. Now the public class may like the class you are declaring. This is the public. The public keyword is an access modifier. What is that public keyword? Public keyword is an access modifier, meaning that it is used to set an access level for the class attributes method and the constructor. Basically, the public, private, protected, there are some access modifier. Let me show you. We divide, we are coming to that. We divide the modifiers into two groups. Access modifier, non-access modifier. And what is that access modifier? Public and the default. Public, the class is accessible by any other class. That means public bus. Suppose public bus or private car, what private bus or public bus. If you are trying, if you are comparing, what you are getting, what you are, what you understand that what in between the difference, if someone is saying that, what is the difference between a public blah, public car and the private car? What is the difference in between that? Basically, the difference is public car, that means anyone can access that car private car only the owner of that particular car can access that car or the pub that owner of that car or the family of the own the owner and the family of that particular owner can access that particular car that is the basically that means what this that is uh, giving you the access level you can you can identify the access level that who can access that particular car like the same that access modifier is like working like the same public when you are using that public key or public access modifier that means the class if you are making a class as public that means that class can be accessible by any other class suppose you have class a and that class a having some attributes and the methods and all and you have class b class c whatever the value of class a in the into the class a that had that particular uh, into that particular class a whatever the programming whatever the method whatever the variable we have declared that class can be accessible in the other class b and the c that whatever the class you have and now the another one the access modifier is the default 
the class is only accessible by the class in the same package. This is used when you don't specify a modifier. That means a class default. Default is what? A class is made only accessible like the package. Like and for the timing, let me tell you what is a package. What is a package? Basically, it is like a container, like a folder. In our, in we all are, have our laptop or the computer in your movie folder. Suppose if you your computer having a movie folder, whenever you are entering the movie folder, you are separating some folder with like Hindi movies, English Bollywood movies, Hollywood movies, okay, like the Chinese movies, whatever the like category, what you have part you have divided into many categories. Into, into the whenever you are entering into that particular Hollywood movies, into the Hollywood movie folder, you have put it some Hollywood movies. Into the Bollywood movie folder, you have put it some Bollywood movies. Like the folder, like in the Java, there are some packages. In Into that package, there are some classes, there are some attributes, there are some methods is available. We are, there is a separate chapter on the package for the timing. This is, that is mandatory. Like in the package also, you can create a package yourself and java also created that predefined packages there that normal there are some package that already created by java there are some that and if you wanted to create a package for yourself that you can also do like that like in the eclipse or whatever the id you are working with you are doing the java programming in that time you need to create the package after creating the package, under the package, you can create the class, you can create the methods, like those the package. If you are using the default access modifier, that time what will be happen? Whatever the class you are declaring as default, that means that class can be accessible in between the package also, package only. Outside the package, that particular default class is not accessible. So what is the public? That if you are making a class a public as public, that means that class can access by any other class. It can be accessible from the different package also. Default, that class is uh, that class only accessible in the same package. Outside the package, from the outside the package, no one can access that particular default class. This is the basically public and the default for the class. Now coming into the attributes method and the constructor. If you are making any class, any attributes methods, attributes means, that means the variables, methods that and the constructor. If you are making any attributes method and constructor as public, the code is accessible for all classes. Okay. Private, the code is only accessible within declared classes. Default, the code is only accessible in the same package. That means public, suppose you have declared any attribute as public or you have declared any method as public or you have declared any constructor as public. That time that method attributes constructor can be accessible from in, in from all class. But you have, if you are declaring private, what is the basically the most, uh, most important thing? What is the difference between the private and the default? That code private, if you are declaring any attribute method or the constructor as private in that time, that particular attribute and the method and the constructor can be accessible within the declared class. That means, suppose you have three class, A class, B class, and the C class. In the A class, you have declared some attributes, methods, and constructor as private. But if you want to use those attributes, methods, and constructor outside the class, that means into the B and the C class, that is not possible because you have made that as private. And whenever you are using the private access modifier, that can be accessible within the declared class. That means within the class, in the class, in you are declaring the attributes and the methods. Outside the class, it is not accessible. But the default, the code is only accessible in the same package. This is used when you don't specify a modifier. You will learn more about the package in the package chapter. Basically, the default part is what? Suppose 
you have making make any attribute method and the constructor as a default. That means within the same package, suppose you have a package, you have a package Z, and within that package there are ten class A B C D E F G H like there are ten class within the same pad and you have declared the attribute method and the constructor in the A class in the Z package. In the jet package there are 10 more classes if you want to use that default constructor method and the attribute in the same package in the different class that can be accessible when you are using the default that means what is the basic difference in the private and the default private if you are declaring any method attribute and the constructor as private within the declare class it can be accessible outside the class it is not accessible Maybe it can be the package can be the same, but that, that that if the package is same, that doesn't matter if you are declaring the method attribute and the constructor as private. But if you are declaring as default, that means within the same package, you are declaring the method attribute and the constructor in a separate class. And if you want to use those constructor method and the attributes in the different class within the same package, that can be possible. That is the access modifier. Now, the access modifier modifiers, that is, there are two types of modifier, access modifier and the non-access modifier. That access modifier is clear to you all? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Now, another one, protected. Sorry, access modifier, there is another one. What is the protected? The code is accessible in the same package and subclass. You will learn about the subclass. Protected, that means the code is accessible in the same package and subclass subclass is what uh, have, have we completed the inheritance chapter can anyone tell me have i have i completed the inheritance or not no, no. no. okay for the timing what is that subclass means subclass means suppose in the java there are abstract class do you know what is an abstract class there is a keyword that is the abstract keyword. Abstract keyword using that abstract class, uh, that keyword, if in the time when we are declaring any class, just before that, like the final, final keyword, like now, just before declaring the variable, if I'm using that final keyword, next time if someone is, someone want to override the value of that particular final variable, that can that cannot be possible because we have using the final keyword we are finalizing the particular variable value like there is an abstract keyword abstract keyword whenever you are you declaring any class just before declaring the class if you are writing that abstract keyword that means using that abstract keyword that class is became the abstract class and what is the benefit and what is the disadvantage of abstract class basically abstract class is a class but like the normal class we can create the object but for the abstract class whenever you are making a class and app as abstract you cannot create the object okay that means suppose just even just just imagine you have declared a class as abstract class but it is like a class, but it is an abstract class. And just because this is an abstract class, you cannot create the object. Suppose in between the abstract class, if you have declared any class attribute, that means in the class in the abstract class block, if you have declared any variable, that means the instance variable you have declared in the class block, in that time, without creating the object of the class, we cannot access that, right? But for an abstract class, we cannot create object. How can I access that? Without creating an object of the class, we cannot access the instance variable. But there is a like, we cannot create the object for the abstract class. So how can I use that? How can I call that particular instance variable? In that time, what we need to do, we will declare just just outside the abstract class, we will declare another new class. Like in the previous example, I think in the previous session, I think we have learned 
we have worked with the multiple classes, right? Like the same way, we will declare another class. Into that class, we will inherit. That means we will extract all the properties, whatever the attributes, whatever, whatever the variable, whatever the method, whatever the program, whatever the thing we, we have uh, done, whatever the programming we have done in the abstract class, the property, that is that was the property of that abstract class. All the property we will extract into the another class, in a normal class. Abstract class property, we will extract into the another class. Now, into the in that new class, into that new class, when I have abstract the, uh, all the property, now that new class is became the owner of that property of that abstract class. Now that means if you have declared a abstract class in between the abstract class body, you have declared a variable A. That is an instance variable. When I am extracting the property of that abstract class to the another class, that means that new class where we are extracting the property of that abstract class, we are extracted to the new class. That means the new class became the owner of the, those variables. That means that A variable we have declared in the abstract class that variable comes into the new class where we have extract the property. Now that new class is not an abstract class. That new class is not an abstract class. Now we will create the object of that new class and we will call that particular A variable. This is the way we can access those abstract class. There is a separate chapter for that. Why I explain you that little thing to understand the, to make you understand the, what is the subclass. That abstract class property is inheriting or the extracting the property of abstract class to the new class. That new class, that new class, that the class is uh, that extracting the property of a, uh, that abstract class, that abstract class actually the parent class. And the class, the new, the new class into that class, we are extracting the property of abstract class just because the new class is extracting the property of abstract class. That means that new class is the subclass of abstract class. That means the new class where we are inheriting the property of that abstract class, that time that is the, that new class is the subclass. That means protected means the code is accessible within the same package and a subclass. And a subclass. Is that particular subclass is clear to you all or anyone having any issue? If you have got that, it's okay. If you haven't got that, then again, it's okay. Because there is a separate chapter in the inheritance chapter. Everything will be more clear. For the timing, that protected is the thing that code is accessible in the same package and the subclass. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, going to the non for classes, you can use either final or abstract. Like the final and the abstract. The final, the class cannot be inherited by other class. In the time variable, in the time of the variable, when we are declaring the as final variable, we are declaring any variable as final variable, that time what will happen? No one can, in, in, no one can override the value of that particular final variable. In the time of the variable, but when you are using that final keyword, just declaring, just before declaring the class, that time what will happen? That time, any other class, like the way, like I just, I'm just giving an example that abstract class property, we are extracting the abstract class property to the new class that is basically called inheritance. That means a, we, the, from a class A, another class property, we are inheriting, we are extracting the property of a class to a new class or the another class. That means the property is extracted to the another class. That is called the, that is basically the concept of inheritance. If you are making a class as final that time, whatever the property of that particular final class having, that property cannot be extracted or the cannot be inherited to the another class. And the abstract, the class cannot be used to create. Just now we are talking about the abstract keyword and that abstract class. Abstract is the keyword or you can say abstract is the non-access modifier. 
and also the final and the abstract those we are talking that it was uh, the keyword anything you can say keyword or the non access modifier whatever you can say the it will be very better if you uh, say the right terms that is the non access modifier final and the abstract abstract that the class cannot be used to create object that means if you are using any you are making any class as abstract that class for that class you cannot create any object to access an abstract class it must be inherited from another class look at this just we are talking just because we cannot create the object of the abstract class if that abstract class having any instance variable for accessing that instance variable we need to extend the property of abstract class to the another class then only we can use that instance there is a separate chapter okay for the time so final and the abstract non access modifier but in the time for the attribute and methods if you are making any attributes of the variable and the method as final that attributes and method cannot be overridden we all know that that means the finalized value will be finalized static then an object that means attributes and the method belong to the class rather than an object that means static remember that static and the public difference between the static and the public what is the difference between the static and the public in the time of declaring any method if you are declaring any method as static that time without creating an object you can access that particular static method what is the public if you are declaring any method as public without creating the object you cannot access that so that static is the same thing attribute and the method belongs to the class rather than an object another if you are making any method or the attribute as an abstract very important part can only be used in an abstract class and can only be used in method the method does not have a body for example abstract void run the body is provided by the subclass you will learn more about the inheritance and abstraction in the inheritance chapter so basically for the timing so you guys can understand a little bit let me tell you what is in the time if you are declaring any attribute of the method and abstract first of all let me tell you when you will declare a method and as abstract method only a abstract class can have a abstract method if you want to if you have declared a normal class if you have declared a normal class and in between that normal class if you want to create a abstract method that is not possible because only a abstract class can have a abstract method a normal class does not contain a abstract method and abstract with another one that means what at first if you want to declare a abstract method first of all you need to make a class and you need to create or you have to make the class as abstract class then only that class can contain a abstract method and the second point if you are declaring any method as abstract method that method that abstract method does not have any body that means every method have its own body using the curly braces we are declaring the body but when you are declaring any abstract method for that particular abstract method there is no body for that abstract method but that body you have to provide it you that just because that abstract method does not have any body that body you have to provide it yourself and where you have to provide that the subclass when you are inheriting or you are extracting the property of abstract class to the another class or the new in a new class that means that new class is became the owner of the property of that abstract class okay the property of the abstract class that means that means uh, property of the abstract class so that new class is the subclass in under the subclass you need to again you need to write that particular abstract method name there you will in the under the subclass you need to provide the abstract method body in the time abstract whenever we will learn about the abstract class we it will be more clear for the timing that is enough now just tell me anyone having any issue in the, in the non access modifier 
Hello. Hello, anyone having any issue? No, sir. Okay. If anyone having any issue, please let me know. Don't hesitate. If you are not getting any point, I will I will explain again and again. Please let me know. Don't hesitate to say no, that. Sir. Okay. Look at this. Those access like this is the example. Okay. This is the final. Look at this. Public class mean final integer x equal final another class attribute that is the data type is double 3.40 public static void mean that we want to access those instance variables so we are creating the method uh, we are creating the object using the object we want to overwrite we want to overwrite the value of the two instance variables in the final non-access monitor static method a static method means that it can be accessed without creating an object of a class unlike public just before we are talking about that the difference between a static and a public if you have declared any method as static you don't need to create any object for calling that static method but if you are declaring any method as public without creating the object you cannot call that particular public method that is the basic difference that we have it is that example we have we have seen in the previous view also abstract now coming to the abstract very important part very important part The program is starting from here, okay? Look at this. After class main, we are making just before declaring the class what access modifier we are writing, non access modifier that is abstract. Abstract means we are writing that means using that particular word that class is became a abstract class. And what is the disadvantage of a abstract class is we cannot create object for the abstract class now public string f name equals to john our normal variable string variable we have declared that variable name is f name and the value of that f name is john another one public int age equals to 24 that to for two are the class attribute that i have declared in the class block for accessing those class just to uh, that two attribute Hello. we need an object yeah tell me sir uh, my uh, is my voice is breaking. Hello. Hello. Is it okay now? No, sir. Is it okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Look at this. Two instance variable I have declared under the class block. Two instance variable. One is f name, another one is age. F name having John, age having 24. Now, public abstract void study. Under the just before we are talking, only our abstract class can contain a abstract method. So we are declaring a method, or we are declaring a method, a abstract method. We are declaring public abstract void study. Basically, how we are writing the difference, how we can create a create an abstract class. Just before declaring the class, we need to write that abstract keyword. And how we can declare a abstract method under us abstract class look at the syntax of declaring the method same public then the abstract keyword we are writing void means that method does not have any particular return type this is the method name study and thus that syntax the sign of the method is that roundness notice one thing i have declared the method i have declared the method but for that method we haven't declared the body using the curly braces that curly braces is the declaring we have used for the declaring the abstract class body but the body of that particular method i haven't declared why because an abstract method does not have any body that abstract method does not have any body now for that for
for the two instance variable, if you are, if you want to call that if name and the age, you need to create the object for that main class. That class is an abstract one. And the disadvantage of an abstract class, we cannot create the object for an abstract class. Now, how then how we can call that two particular variable? For that, what I am doing? Another class we are declaring. Class student. Another class we are declaring that class name is student. Now, <clears throat> class student, we are writing, we are doing the inheritance. We are doing the inheritance. Inheritance means for inheriting, you need to use that extends keyword. Using the extends keyword, extends main. And the main is, what is that main? Main is the name of that abstract class. Main is the name of that abstract class. That main I'm extending under the student class. That means whatever the property is available in that particular abstract class main, all the pro property under the class student. Under the class student. That means that all the property of class main now comes into the student class. Now comes into the student class because under the uh, under the student class we have extended the property of that main class. Now that if name age that abstract method comes into the student class. Okay. Now public int graduation year equals to two thousand eighteen. That means here public int another variable instance variable. Again it is an instance variable because this is under a class block, not in any method block. So another instance variable we have declared that is available into the student class. Public void study. Now, one thing, remember one thing, suppose, suppose your father having 100 rupees, okay? Your father having 100 rupees and you also, you, you, are, you are having 50 rupees in your hand. If you are if you are inheriting the father, your father's property that your father having one hundred rupees and you are inheriting you are extending you are doing the inheritance that means you are taking the property you are taking the access of the property of that pro property of your father that one hundred rupees now what is the actual amount in your hand that one hundred from your father you got and fifty rupees in your hand. That means the total amount is became 150. That means you are the owner of that 100 rupees plus 50 rupees together 150 rupees. That means you also that 50 rupees is your own property. That 100 rupees is your father's property. Your father, you are extracting your father's property. That means that 100 rupees you are taking from your father. Now you became the owner of 150 rupees because your father having 100 you are having 50 together 150 rupees now you are the owner of 100 150 rupees like the same thing abstract class main having those property that means those variable and that method that student class have its own property and that student that student class having own property that means which property public in graduation year equals to 2018 that particular variable we have declared under the student class that means that graduate that variable is the property of student class and you have extended the property of that abstract class main that means that abstract class having f name age two instance variable and a abstract method that study method two variables and a study method now can anyone tell me how many methods and how many variables the owner of uh, that student study class, student class is the owner of how many methods and how many variables? Hello? Actually, actually it's a three variable. Yeah. And, um, two methods. No, actually, actually you are right, but you are wrong. You have seen that in the student class, there is a study method, right? You are counting the study method and that method. Actually, what we are doing that we are talking, that means you are right, that owner of three variable, if name age comes into the student class and into the student class, there is graduation year. There is a graduation year together, three variable in, but try to focus I have just before I, have, I was talking, 
abstract method does not have any body. Look at this method. Have I started the curly braces and ended the curly braces for declaring the behavior, declaring the body? No, because abstract body method does not have any body. That body you need to provide yourself in the subclass. That means which one is the subclass? That main class is the that main is the parent class. And that main class property we are extending into the student class. That student class is the subclass of property we are inheriting. That means the student class is the subclass. So where you need to provide the body of the abstract class into the subcular program. Which one is the subclass? Student class is the subclass. So in under the student class, we are providing the body basically. How we are providing? Into the student class, we will not write that abstract keyword. We will only write public void study. Now we are starting the curly braces, ending the curly braces in between that, like the normal method we are declaring. Only we will remove that abstract keyword into the subclass, into the subclass. We will only remove the uh, abstract keyword and just need to write public void study. Now here we will provide the body using the curly braces and in between the curly braces, just because this is a void method, that means this no, no method does not have any particular return type. So we are writing system out of print and that message. Basically, that means study method and that study method is the same. That study method is the is the abstract method. So here in the in where we have declared under the abstract class, we have declared the abstract method. Here there is no body for that abstract, the subclass, how we are providing the body, just we are removing the abstract keyword, just writing normally public void study like the normal method. Now, when you are, you are declaring the body of the, the abstract method in the subclass, in that time, that method, we will write the same method, that the abstract method, we will use the name of that abstract method, but we will not use that abstract keyword. So public void study, here we are giving the curly braces, ending the curly braces, in between the curly braces, we are writing system out of print LN. Now, the body is also available. I can call the behaves name because that now, now remember one thing, just because from here, from the abstract class, we cannot call directly. <coughs> when I am in, I am extending the property of that abstract class into the student class. Now the student class became the new owner of if name age and that method. So that property comes into the student class. Forget about this. It does not have any value now because all the property comes into the student class. Now, if I am making any, you know, making the object name, it comes into the student class, but still it is an instance variable. So for accessing the instance variable, we need to create the object. Without creating the object, we cannot access. Now, if that just because this variable comes into the student class, that just because the student class is became the new owner of these two variable and this method. So just by creating the object, if I'm calling that if name and age, it will give you an output. But here we will not do. Look at this. I have previously I have told you that when you are working with the multiple class, two, three, four class you are working, one of them, there should be the main method. You have to declare the main method, one of that but one of the class. And only one class will contain that main method. So abstract class main. We are property when inheriting to the student class. In under that student class, we are declaring the body of the abstract method. Now, another class we are de declaring. Class second. Class second, we are, we are declaring the main method. Public static void main string args. Just because into that second class, I am declaring the main method. That's why that second class is the actual main class. In between that second class that having that main method, we need to create the object of that student class because from student class property and all. So into the second class, I have declared the main method. So that second class became the actual main class. Now here we are creating the object for the student class because under the student class, we have inherited the property of the abstract class. So if I wanted to access those instance variable, we need the object of the student class. Student my obj equals to new student constructor. We are the same way we are the same by using the syntax of creating object, we are declaring the we are creating the object. Now system route dot print ln normal double within the double quotes, whatever I will write the way we are right, we are we will write it will be printed in your screen. So name class my obj is the name of the student class object if name where is that if name if name is in the abstract class we are calling 
if name now just because if name comes in the student class so using the student class object name we are calling the if name we are calling the age and we are calling the graduation we are using the object name of the student class and as well as i am calling the method also that method is study method that abstract method that method body we have provided under the study uh, student class using the object name student class object name we are calling the study method also so we will get all the output together now let me know anyone having any issue hello no sir <clears throat> Please, everyone, everyone, I want, I want to hear from, I want to hear from everyone that you are having any issue or not. Don't hesitate. No, sir. Don't hesitate no, to sir. say that I am having any problem. Hello, sir. Everyone, please execute that example. Hello, sir. Yeah, tell me. Sir, if I don't write uh, after method in after class, then what becomes error? Uh, you need to write that because only a abstract class can have only a abstract method okay this is the mandatory thing only a abstract class can contain an abstract method if you are declaring any abstract method in the normal class that time definitely you will get an error but what kind of error you will get that i really don't know because i have never tried that why should I go? Why should I create an abstract class into the normal class when I know that I cannot create an abstract method we, uh, we in, a, in a normal class? Yes. So please, everyone, execute that example and just don't take too much time.
Is it done, everyone? Hello? Yes, sir. Is it done? Should I need to scroll the page or we have completed? Yes, sir. This part is this part is completed. Okay. So I go to the next topic. Hello. Should I go to the next topic? So next topic is the Java encapsulation. One of the most important features of OOPS. Encapsulation. What is that encapsulation? The meaning of encapsulation is to make sure that sensitive data is hidden from user. To achieve this, you must declare a class variable attribute as private, provide public get and set method to access the up access and update the value of a private variable. Basically, encapsulation is what? To make sure that sensitive data is hidden from the user. To achieve it, you need to use the variable and the attributes or as private. That means some data if you want to hide from the user that you can do or you can achieve the data security basically using the encapsulation using the private access modifier and provide the public gate and set method to access and update the value of a private variable. You learned from the previous chapter that private variables can only be accessed within the same class. However, it is act possible to access them if you provide public get and set method. The get method returns the variable value and set method says the value. Now, we have just before we have learned about the private access modifier. If you are declaring any variable as private variable or the private attribute, that means those variables you cannot access outside the class. Outside the class, you cannot access the private variable. But using the encapsulation, it is possible. How? Using the getter and the setter. Basically, the get and the set. Using the get and set, you can access private variable using encapsulation. That means outside the class. How we can do that? Look at this example. Public class person. A normal public class we have declared under the class body private string name private string name private string get name return name basically the methods public we are doing the encapsulation using the we can use the private x private attribute using the get and set basically the getter method and the setter method you need to declare two method one is the getter method one is the setter method using the getter method and the setter method we can access that private variable outside the class we all know that because we all know that private access uh, private access modifier if you are declaring any variable that means that variable cannot use outside the class. How can I use that? Using the encapsulation, using the getter and the setter method. Now we need to, after declaring, so if you want to use those private variable, uh, you want to access that private variable outside the class, for that you need to declare two method. One is the getter method, one is the setter method. Now let's see how to declare that two method, that getter and method and the setter method. Public class person, a class I have declared, private string name, a normal variable I have declared, but the, the, the modifier is the private. Now, accessing the private variable, we need to declare the two, two methods. One is the getter, one is the setter. And look at this, private string name, that variable, I the value of that particular variable, I have not declared. 
and where we will declare that we are declaring the getter method how public string get name that method name of the method is a get name method within the curly braces return name look at this method that method having a return type that method is the string that we are return type is the string and that private variable i have declared that is also a string that means that name i can easily return under that get name method right that under the get name method just because that method having a return type as a string type so i can easily return that variable name into that get name method so we are returning that particular private variable into the getter method now getter method is complete just need to declare a getter method and you need to return that private variable under the getter method now you need to create the setter method how public void set name public void set name previous one is the get name this one is the set name and that set name you need to give up parameters and because that variable remember need to follow the data type of that particular private variable that you want to access outside the class you need to follow the data types that private variable having the data type is string so that getter method also having string return type and the setter method also have to be the string data type or the void you can say also void you can write but the parameter you can you need to pass the in void means that method does not have any particular return type that means into that particular method you can uh, pass string in boolean any type of data that means a particular data that you have to pass any particular data type there is no guideline but you can pass any data type so public void set name having a parameter that parameter is the string type and the parameter name is the new name now this dot name that means this dot name this means it will indicate the class block into that particular class there is a variable this dot name variable name equals to new name that means that name i am returning into the getter method and that name variable value what i am giving the variable value the variable value is the new name that means whatever the parameter we are passing into the setter method that parameter value of that parameter will be the value of that name variable name private variable up to this is it clear hello yes sir okay now that example explain the get method returns the value of the variable name set method makes takes a parameter that is the new name and assign it to the name like this and the this keyword is used to refer to the current object class block there is a that name variable now the whole one is the that is an error that is a new one now this is basically getter method setter method part is clear this is not part of the getter method and the setter method this is the what is this public class mean public static void mean person my obj equals to new person what is that person that creating an object for the person if you are creating the object of the person and my obj dot name equals to that person is a is a class in that person class that private name variable i have declared and that private name variable like if i want to uh, access that particular private act, private name variable uh, outside the class that means i am creating another class public class main the previous class was person that new class is the main class that class name is the main and under the main class i am declaring the uh, main method so that main class is not only the name main this is became the actual main class but into that main class if you want to use that private variable first of all that private variable you have declared where into the class block that means this is an instance variable first of all this is an instance variable the second one is the this is the private variable private access with the private access modifier so instance variable without creating an object we cannot access so let me create the object for the person class where that particular name private variable is the that name private variable i have declared person class object i have declared now my obj dot name equals to john that means using the object name of that person class we are calling that name variable that private name variable and that will give you an error because that is an access modifier in the previous session in the previous example in the many example that same thing we have done we have declared the variable in another class 
and we are calling the variable in another class by creating the object of that particular class where in under the class we have declared that particular variable. The same thing we are doing but we are getting an error. Why we are getting an error? Because that variable, that instance variable that we have declared in the class block that is an private that we have declared with the private access modifier. So by creating the object of that particular class, we cannot access that private variable because outside the class, we cannot access that private variable because that, that um, person is a different class where we have declared that private variable and that main is a different class. So in the different class, we cannot access that private variable by creating until we are creating the object, we are using the object name, we are mentioning the object name. Still, we will not access that. We cannot access that. It will generate even error. How we can give a, how we can access that using the getter method and the setter method. So, in that person class, we have created two methods: getter method and the setter method. Under the getter method, we have returned that particular variable, private variable name. And under the setter method, what we have done? We have in the setter method, we have passed the parameter and that parameter we have passed in the name variable. Now, how we can do that actual process using the getter method and the setter method. Public, that, that actual, how we can do that. This is the actual program. Public static void main, the main method we have declared. Now, we need to create the object because this is an instance variable. That name is the instance variable. Person my obj equals to new person. So object creation is done. Now coming to the actual part. My obj dot set name. What is that set name? That setter method we are calling. My obj dot set name. Then John, look at that example. My obj that using the object of that person class using the and having a parameter. That parameter is what? The parameter is we are storing. We are assigning the parameter value to the name private variable. So that new name, that set name, having that parameter, whatever the parameter we will put. So the same thing we are doing, that my obj set name method we are calling and the parameter value that John I am giving. So that John, the value of that name, that private variable name that I have declared in the class block in the person class, that private variable, the value is John because that parameter we have passed into the assigned to the name variable. Now we are calling using the, that setter method we are calling. Now we need to call the getter method. System dot out dot print and my obj dot get name means get name will return you the name and that value of name I have set using the setter method. Using the get name we are calling the method. When we are creating the getter and the setter method, first of all we are getting the, we are creating the getter method. Then we are set using you are creating the setter method. But in the time when you are calling First of all, we are calling the setter method and assigning the arguments. And then we are calling the getter method using the object name. Because that method, that variable for name is private. But the getter method and the setter method, that two methods are not private. So using the OJAS because that two getter method and the setter method are not private, we can easily access that using the object name in the different class. So, this is the way, a little bit hard way, we can access with the very lengthy and... Yes, sir, clear. Uh, actually, your voice is breaking. Clear, yes, clear. Yes, sir. Uh, clear, no? Okay, just do one thing. First, practice that code. First, this one is done. Let me know. I will scroll your part when we are calling the thing okay. in the another class. Can you give Hello? the real-time example? Your voice is... Can you write it in the chat? Actually, she said real-life example of interface. That was not properly ordered. Can you guys please write it in the chat box, whatever you guys wanted to tell me? Yeah, for this real time example, what kind of real time example I can keep? Currently, for currently, I there is no real time example is not coming in my mind actually.
is this part uh, done everyone should i scroll down yes sir this one Is it completed, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so that was the last topic for today. And uh, is anyone tell me anyone having any issue during the session, whatever the topic we have done today? Anyone having any issue? Please let me know. No issue, sir. Okay. So let me stop share my screen. Let me stop the recording.